Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show with your host, Phil Tarrant. Hi, good day, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, if uh, you're in Sydney, you'll probably be listening to this and thinking back to today. Uh, we've had about a month or so of rain in about two hours and it's absolutely brought the city to a standstill. It's a nightmare out there. It's about 10.30 in the morning here. It's been belting rain for the last uh, three or four hours. A huge um, storm cell come over Sydney and it's completely wiped the city out. Everyone's late for work. Uh, train stations are flooded. Roads are flooded. People's cars are floating down the, the streets. Uh, it's all gone mad. It goes to show um, how uh, weather can stop a city and how a city needs good infrastructure, irrespective of the weather conditions, to make sure that it moves on. Sydney's a big city. If you put it uh, within uh, the context of America, it would be a top 10 city in terms of size. It's a large city, as is Melbourne. Uh, so we need this infrastructure to keep us right. But uh, stuff like this happens every now and then. It just reminds us how we are all victims of the weather. This guy uh, in the studio today, Ben Coulter, he's uh, it's taken him three hours to get here today, all the way from Canola. He he thought he'd uh, jump in a car and drive in, and uh, it's probably the worst mistake he's made. But um, anyway, this is Sydney, and this is the way it is. Ben, how are you going? Good, mate. Thank you for having me. You don't look too wet. You're okay? Oh, I'm a bit drenched down oh, here, yeah. but that's yeah. all right. <laughs> it's, it's a, I know a lot of people that live in Cronulla. They probably listen to this podcast, so I try and avoid Cronulla. It's a long <laughs> way from anywhere. But uh, a day like today, it's a bit of a hike into the city, right, particularly when it's raining? Yeah, I would have thought I allowed plenty of time, but um, apparently not. Yeah, oh, well, it, this is good. Um, do you ever get the train in from Cronulla? Is I it a... Try to avoid public transport, if oh, I'm yeah. honest. I don't know why. I'm probably going to have to reassess my thoughts on that, though, I think. Oh, well, mate, people use uh, public transport normally to, to tune into podcasts and learn all about property. But uh, do you listen to podcasts? Are you a podcast sort of guy? I do, yeah. You do? Yeah, yeah. Property so, or other stuff as well? Yeah, bits and pieces of um, just business-related things and, and lots of property podcasts as well. So mm. you guys, obviously, and um, the boys over at the Property Couch, I yeah, listen to all of well. their stuff. And, yeah, so I suppose it's not so bad being stuck in traffic when I've got the excuse to burn through a few podcasts it's pretty good it's um there's no shortage of property podcasts around there at the moment and it's funny everyone uh, that that sort of comes on the show goes yeah listen to yours and i also listen to the property couch yeah. that's pretty much the extent of it so i'm happy with that two very different podcasts guys over the property couch do a really good job they're very technical and uh they're sort of focused on money management is um is spot on so uh uh, if you're looking for another podcast to listen to it, I shouldn't be doing this, but I am all about uh, better education and property investors. Go on and tune into uh, Ben and Bryce. Those guys do a great job. But um, Smart Property Investment Show is all about talking to investors and what they're up to. And uh, we like investors from all walks of life, whether they're new, they're old, they started just investing in property or they've been doing it for years and years and got huge portfolios or small portfolios. Where do you fit within all that? You are a property investor, Ben. You invest in property? Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. How, how big is your portfolio? And I'll sort of work backwards from there. What's, what sort of size is it? now yeah so there's five properties in the portfolio and it's okay. coming up to an asset base of about three million okay yeah so so three million asset base just shy yeah yeah five properties and what's your sort of debt position on that do you keep it pretty leveraged or is it pretty pretty low it's pretty leveraged probably a little bit more so than i'd like it to be just through this phase of acquiring i suppose i'm still going through that sort of that sort of stage of the process. So mm. it sits maybe around 70%. 70% yeah. of the uh, yep. which is okay considering, uh, I don't know where the properties are and we'll get to that, but yep. um, with a, a sort of a changing market and a talk of um, uh, softening capital values in Sydney and Melbourne, it's okay to have a bit of fat in your portfolio now. So I wouldn't want to be leveraged any more than that really, no. uh, current situation. So you said you're in the acquisition phase. So yes. what, why do you invest in property? What's the long-term goal for you? For me, just choices at the end of the day, just the freedom to sort of wake up and follow my different passions and things that I want to do, I suppose. Mm. It's not so much sort of a, a get rich type thing for me where I, I want to drive around in Lambos and things like that. But um, just, yeah, just to have the freedom and the choices to do the things I want to do, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. What, what do you do for a living? Uh, so I own a plumbing business. Okay. And I've recently transitioned across into the buyer's agency space as well. Oh, are you, are you doing both of those now side by side? Currently or? I am, yes. Yeah. Are you going to yep. give up the plumbing? Uh, eventually, yeah, I'll get yeah. sort of some someone to take over that side of it full time. Um, that's the plan. Transition okay. across in, and then hopefully make the switch over into there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so a lot of people doing yeah. this now. So with the plumbing business, do you employ people at the moment, or is it just just yourself sort of run around fixing stuff? At the moment, just subcontractors mostly. Okay. Yeah, so I've got no sort of full time employees on wages, and that's just something I've decided to the way I want to structure it, just to keep overheads down and. Have yeah. a little bit more flexibility as well. What sort of plumbing work do you do? Just anything and everything? Mostly resi stuff, just yeah, yeah some new builds, renovations, and then a little bit of maintenance as well. Mm. How'd yeah. you end up in plumbing? Is it always want to be a plumber or is it a family thing? <laughs> no, it wasn't yeah. actually. I didn't know what I wanted to do when I leave school. And yeah. um, 
the old man said, oh, if you don't know what you want to do, you've got to go get something behind you. So I, um, I had a mate who'd left school a couple of years before me mm. and um, he was a plumber and I was close with him at the time. So I thought, why not work with him every day? And we used to run around and did my apprenticeship through the company he was working for. And yeah, it was good at the time, but yeah. yeah. Tradies can make pretty good money. Plumbers are one of the highest paid trades, right? So you know, they you say. do pretty well. Yeah, apparently. But it's also potentially a pretty, no pun intended, crappy job sometimes when you're having a flush out sewers yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I bet you a bit over that. Yeah, it can be. I'm yeah. a little bit more selective with the work, so I don't sort of carry around the drain cleaning equipment and things like that. So I sort of manage to steer clear of it. But um, yeah, it is dirty work and mm. yeah, it's it's not ideal from that perspective, yeah. I suppose. But yeah. So, but it's been a good vehicle, I guess, for you to get you into property. Yeah. Where, where, so let's have a chat about your portfolio. The first property you, you, you purchased, what is it? Where was it? Yeah. So it's an apartment down in Cronulla. Okay. Just in a small, um, small block of four, probably... 50 meters back from the beach. Okay. So it was a good spot. And I, d- I bought that as my home to start with. Yeah. So it was another sort of thing. My old man always sort of said to me, just try and get into the property market as soon as you can. And not so much from an investing perspective. He was sort of more so buy yourself something that you can sort of start paying the debt down on and, and call your home. That's so he's, he sort of pushed me down that road, which I'm thankful that he did now. And then. And when did you buy that? Uh, that was 2012. Okay. I reckon you've done pretty well out of that. That's done really well. We're yeah. just um, in discussions with some developers to take that block as well. So that's okay. That's so been, there's only four in the block, yes. isn't there? Yep. Okay, mm-hmm. and everyone's sort of on the same page of selling it off to a developer. Yeah, so we should we're hoping to receive contracts this week actually. So okay. it'll be an extended settlement of two years, but everyone's sort of at least verbally agreed to those terms. So it'll are you be still living? In, are you still living in that? In yes. That. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Where, where is it? A couple of, just off the beach? Is it in just Granola? in South Cronulla? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, just uh, near Shelley Park, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. A lot, so there's a lot of stuff getting sold to, to developers there. Yeah, it's the going moment. ahead pretty yeah. quickly, that area. They're building a lot of uh, luxury apartments in there, and um, they seem to be selling really well as well. A lot mm. of the stuff's gone off the plan before the construction's even finished, which is interesting. So, so you bought that in 2012, four blocks. What did you pay for that when you got it? 520000 520. Yep. Okay. Just a little too better. And, and as a sort of a bulk purchase to a developer, what do you think you'll get for it? It looks like about one3 Okay. Yeah, so that's done well in that time wow. frame. And yeah. been, did you actually pay the debt off over time with that? You've been, um, or you've been using that to, to pull yeah. equity out of? So I did start on principal and interest. And then yeah. as I sort of went down the path of becoming interested and, and educated about property investment, I did roll that over to an interest only loan mm. and pull some equity out to buy some of the other properties. Yeah. Yeah. So you might get a pretty good payday on that. Yes. Yeah. yeah that'll be, it'll be good. Are, are you already sort of working out how you're going to spend that money? Yeah, trying yeah. to put some plans in place about what we're going to do and which okay. way to move forward with it and whether we want to sort of go down the um, rent vesting path, I suppose, for lack of a better term, or whether to jump into something else that mm. we can make our home. So a yeah. couple of different options okay. in the table. We've got a little while to think about it. That choice is good. Two years, so you just live there for two years and yeah. and um, push it. What are the other people like in the block? Are they older or younger people? Yeah, they're sort of mid-40s, the yeah. other people in the block. And then two of the apartments are actually uh, leased out, tenanted, so one – One's a family and then the mm. others are a, um, a younger couple, mid-20s probably, but everyone gets along really well. It's, it's been awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a good spot. So it's little been an spot. easy process. You all get together and say, what do you reckon? Yeah. Was there any sort of detractors or everyone went, yeah, absolutely, let's do it? Um, no, it's been in the pipeline for a little while. There's a bit of back and forth and, mm. and a couple of the owners wanted to do sort of a buyback type scenario where they, they buy obviously one of the new apartments okay. back into the block. So that that's taken a bit of organizing and, mm. and negotiating with the developers and that type of thing. So there, it's been a process, but it's run smoothly. The, having that closer relationship where we can sort of get together and chat between ourselves and make some decisions on that front has been really good. Yeah. So Who's taken the lead within the sort of four owners to work with the developers? Is that been you? Have you sort of pushed it? Yeah, they've kind of gone about it an interesting way. The developers have sort of dealt with everybody individually and it's mm. only a f- the fact that I suppose that we do have that sort of closer relationship with the neighbours being a small block that we've been able to get an idea of where each other's at. Otherwise, mm. um, I suppose if we didn't have that relationship, it would have been very separate. You wouldn't really have known what was going on between sort of each party. Yeah. Yeah. How, how big is the block the, in, the, in Cronulla? In terms of um, oh, the, land the, size? Land size, yeah. yeah. It's probably... Yeah. I'd be guessing it'd be around 1,100, 1,200 square. It's not massive. Yeah, it's still big. So yeah. how many apartments will they put on that? They'll... Well, they bought the block next door as well. Okay. And we're, we're on the corner, on a corner block. Yeah. So they'll probably, based on some of the other developments they've done in the area, I would have thought they'd be able to get 10 on there. But okay. They can go quite wrong. high there, about three stories along that. Uh, yeah, street, I think yeah. they can go, I think the one next door's got about four floors. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Okay, yeah, and underground car park and all the rest. So, yeah, great. Yeah. And therein lies the the opportunity with buying this sort of stuff. Um, uh, something with a bit of an X factor, you know. At, at in 20, 2012 when you bought that, you probably weren't probably thinking about, oh, this is a potential development site. Someone will pick it up. Um, you know, or, or were you actually thinking that mindset as a long term play? Look, I wasn't initially. Mm. Um, the old man did mention it at the start. He said. You know, he he obviously liked the block when we sort of were looking around, and he, as I said, he sort of pushed me into it. And there was some mm. good aspects of it: it was a little block of four and north facing and corner block. And he, I, I do remember him saying that one day it may get bought up by developers, but it certainly wasn't the reason to go into it. Yeah. It was it was just going to be a home at the start. So that's all right. Well, but, you know, um, luck luck is a yeah luck is a good thing as well, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's opened up, I suppose, my eyes to the opportunities now moving forward with other purchases that I make to sort of try and not be reliant upon that because like mm. you say, I think a lot of it is to do with right place, right time, a bit of luck and things like that. But at least if there's potential opportunities there, then it's another upside. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, so yep. after Cronulla, what was the next property after that? Yeah, so what happened is actually slightly after I, a little while after I moved in, I met my partner and mm. she actually owned another apartment in Cronulla. She'd had that since 2009. Okay. So we have kept that as well. Okay. She lives with me now, obviously. Yeah. Um, so we've kept that. So that's just another little one bed apartment in um, South Cronulla as well. Okay. Yeah. So she paid, I think, um, two fifty for that in two thousand nine. Okay. I want to say. Yeah, I reckon that's at least doubled. And yeah, more about five eighty. That yeah. one's worth. Yeah. Now. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And that's how it rented out now. Yeah, that's tenanted. That's yeah. yeah that's that's a good little property. And it just yeah. ticks away and had no issues with it's that. Got a pretty pretty reasonable rent rental return on it. Based on the purchase price, it yeah, does, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think it's um, about 420 a week. Okay. Yeah. And never been refinanced, never pulled equity out? Uh, we did recently. Okay. Yes. All yeah. right. Just on the last purchase we made. So. Okay, cool. So, and then after that property, um, what was the yep. next property? So, we bought, a little, um, uh, we bought a little apartment in Mermaid Waters on the Gold Coast um, okay. in 2013. Yeah. We don't own that anymore. We've since sold that. Did, why'd you sell that? Um, I just becoming more educated, I think, and I just thought the money was better spent elsewhere. And yeah. um, we sold it a couple of years ago, and didn't do too badly considering how long we held it from for. Um, mm. We paid two seventy, sold it eighteen months later for probably three forty. Okay. And obviously, once you take into consideration, That's obviously square. purchase costs and holding and everything like that, we wouldn't have made a lot of money. But yeah, we didn't get burnt, so that was okay. But you probably got a good education out of it. Yeah, as well. yeah, I don't. Yeah, we, I don't sort of regret the decision. Mm. And then. Okay. Um, Interesting. Okay, and after yeah. Mermaid Waters? Yep, so after Mermaid Waters, we went to Logan. Yep. So we bought a little townhouse in Hillcrest. Okay. Yeah. What did you pay for that, about 210 220 Uh 199 199 Paid for that one, yeah. 199 Hillcrest. Yep. There's lots of that stuff up there, sort of those. Yeah. Two, two bedroom townhouses, sort of two storage type things on a block of 10. Yeah. You know, it's pretty common. When did you buy that? Sorry, 20... Uh, that would have been... 2014 i want to say okay. yeah how's that gone for you um i don't think it's done a massive amount in terms of capital growth to be mm. honest it's it rents for about 275 a week that one okay and it's it's we've had probably sort of three weeks vacancy across the since we've owned it so yeah. i don't think it's been too bad performer it's got a little bit of um scope for some upside a little cosmetic renovation or something down the track yeah. when um when the market justifies it we sort of just take note of what the vacancies are doing up there and just let it tick away like you say there's plenty of that sort of stock up there at the moment so yeah there is and there's a lot of people up there buying it um everyone's still waiting for brisbane to fire everyone's yeah. been talking about it for a little while so we talk about it a bit on the podcast go and check out some of the other episodes we've done around brisbane and um when, when it's actually going to go, start shifting all the fundamentals seem to be right and Everyone I talk to about Brizzy is talking about sort of interstate migration and infrastructure and all this sort of stuff. So at a point in time when it does fire, I don't think it's got to do anything like Sydney or Melbourne, mm. but, um, you know, it's going to be sort of steady growth for a period of time. So after um, Hillcrest in Logan, where did you buy next? Yep, we went and we bought a three-bedroom house in Crestmead. Okay. So we bought a house on a um, on an 800-square block. So hopefully there's a little bit of development potential down the track on yeah. that one or even just a little granny flat or something if we want to – get the cash flow up but for now we're just sort of sitting on that we did a little um done a couple of little renovations there nothing dramatic redid the deck out the back and one out the front as well yeah. so you do that yourself or you just get some just outsourced it? it yeah 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 that's cool and is that the last one or is it one more purchase uh, no there? one more purchase we bought a another property in deception bay okay yes yeah, so that was just a um little three-bedroom house on a piece of land that was recently rezoned up there in Yep. near all the um the shops and stuff in Deception Bay so that's that's just another sort of 
buy and hold type thing with a bit of potential for some renovation to tidy it up down the track and um, hopefully one day we might be able to take advantage of the rezoning up there as well. So as a standalone asset now, it it's okay. It's actually delivering, it's got a purpose in your portfolio. You didn't buy it for the basis that it is rezoned and you will develop it. You bought it for the now, but yes, upside potential. Yeah, in the upside future. potential in the future, yeah. Yeah, so it's got it's got reasonable cash flow there, so it doesn't cost us anything to hold on to, and mm. I think there's some good opportunities up that way in Brisbane in the future. So, yeah, I'm happy with that little purchase yeah. as well. Deception Bay has been pick for a number of people for for six, seven years. People have been yeah. talking about Deception Bay and waiting uh, for something to happen. Wait, waiting for something to happen. It's it. You look at geogra- ge- geographically, you look at it and think, oh, it's on right on the water, mm. and uh, uh, the socio-economic makeup of that suburbs sort of lends itself to a level of uh, gentrification at a point in time and, you know, that the train line sort of moves out towards that way now and, uh, you know, you can commute into town there. So all the fundamentals around Deception Bay have, have been strong. It's just a matter of waiting for, for it to actually shift in the gear and yeah. when, 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 when that trigger is going to be pulled. You can actually look looking at your um, your portfolio is is just really a, a reflection of, I guess, your evolution as a property investor, right? You've, you've changed quite a lot from just being a – uh, I don't, how old are you? Not that old. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yep. So you bought your first property when you're sort of what mid twenties in twenty in Cronulla, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's like, oh, this is this is I, I got to buy a house to live in. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, and now you sort of moved into buying assets which have upside potential with with rezoning and stuff like that. So it's really yeah. a it's really a, uh, a a view of your evolution as a, a property investor. You know, probably Mermaid Waters that you've sold out on. You know, from Mermaid Waters to Hillcrest and Logan are two very different assets, right? Yes. You know, so what's been the big influence you think on 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 the way you've uh, evolved as an investor? Is it just is it education or is it surrounding yourself with people or are you are you been getting some good advice? What what's what's the basis of it all? Yeah, I think a little bit of education and then and and then like you say on the advice front as well. So based off the back of different podcasts like what I've been listening to with you guys, reaching out to buyers agents and sort of other professionals and getting a bit of direction down that path and then just sort of trying to expand my knowledge the whole time along the way as well mm. and, and set my own sort of plan and yeah. Has it been gradual or was there a point in time where you just went, shit, I actually get it now? It's probably, yeah, there's probably a point in time after a little while where I started to really get it and, mm. and then it's just sort of, it's almost been frustrating that like I've wanted to move quicker than I have been able to yeah. and then transitioning and crossing to self-employment and starting couple of businesses and things like that that's held me back in terms of borrowing and and slowed me down from sort of i suppose growing the portfolio like i want to but um i'm just trying to um be a little bit patient with it which mm. isn't my strong suit but <laughs> working on that how are you going work-wise and sort of getting finance has that been pretty easy? you said your partner is she uh a payg yes employee okay yeah. so that's um on that last deception bay purchase we actually Went through that's we refinanced the Parramatta Street, which is in her prop, uh, her name, yeah. and then we um, uh, sorry the Cronulla property, and then um, we went in her name as well, just because of that reason, the mm. bank because I don't have sort of um, strong gets hard being self employed, yeah, yeah. So. And a lot of people um, uh, who are running small businesses, it could be a great enabler for for wealth creation running a small business, but I think a lot of people often forget that uh, they need to be able to present a pretty sound financial proposition to a bank, yes. you know, and and if you want to run your business uh, as a loss-making exercise for, for whatever reason, um, you know, that can really impact your ability to lend. So if, if you are self-employed and you're thinking about sort of uh, buying more property, you've got to make sure you present really good financials, otherwise you'll struggle getting finance. So you're buying together now as a, a unit, yourself and your partner, or are you still going sort of individual? We're buying together yeah. in terms of, I suppose, that we've both got one the common goal and and building out assets to to fit that that goal, I suppose, within yeah. the portfolio. But in terms of structuring, um, we're still it's still, still sort still of separately, separate. yeah. And we just think that's the best way forward for now, at least, and that's the way we've been advised on it. Too. I was going to say it's probably a personal decision, but it's also a financial decision. Yeah, you've been getting some good advice from an accountant, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see. Uh, I actually see your mate Munzer all oh, the oh, podcast. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah, now he's been steering us in the right direction. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. It's so funny how often that happens. Where did you find him through this podcast? Did you? Yes. So you tracked yeah. him down. Yeah. He's, he's good accountant, Munzer. Good guy as well. Munzer, yeah. if you listen, how are you going, mate? Good. Uh, oh, I think I owe you a phone call. But um, <laughs> just how often that happens, people go, "Oh yeah, I, I, he's the same accountant as you." And I go, "Oh okay, here we yeah. go." He's it, yeah, but it comes down to whether it's you know someone like Munzer or at, at Keshab or yeah, there's a lot of really good accountants out there uh, who can really help steer you in the right direction when it comes to structure and uh, my advice would be to if you're 
looking for an accountant, make sure you choose someone who has a leaning towards property and is really specialised in property because some some accountants don't really get property investment. You know, the headspace is somewhere else. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's what what I found early in the piece. I had a good accountant and like he was a, he's a great guy and, and he was helpful with um, sort of the tax return side of it and those mm. bits and pieces. But I just as I sort of expanded my knowledge on that front as well and went and saw some other people, I realised how much there is – more to know and and like you say how important it is to get someone who sort of specializes on that side of it as well yeah how hard was it the shift accountants was it a pretty easy process to make it easy uh yeah it wasn't too bad for me because yeah. at the time i was just a payg so that was really the only thing i was going to the accountant for yeah i had the one property so um there wasn't a whole lot involved in that either so it wasn't a big transition across mm. um but since working with monzo for a few years I think now he's got a pretty good understanding of sort of our situation and what we're trying to achieve and and how we're going to get there. So it would be a little bit of a – it's not an ideal thing to have to shift it does across. Does he do your business stuff and your yes. um, uh, your property stuff as well? He does both. Is your business stuff and your property stuff all mixed in together or are you keeping pretty separate? At this stage, we've kept them pretty separate. The yeah. business stuff is – I suppose it's pretty new and early mm. in the piece. So we haven't sort of had to – blend them in any way at this point in time but yeah. we'll see what happens in the future with that yeah uh, interesting so and and all the management and this stuff do you do you look after the Cronulla property yourself or do you have it with a property manager oh uh, we outsource it all yeah uh, property yeah. managed for everything yeah we just it's just not worth it to us to to have to deal with the day-to-day you don't want to go there. there and fix uh leaking taps and stuff no no i've got enough to do <laughs> just for property business how hard is it i, I know how to fix a, a leaking tap right but yeah how, how easy is it to fix a leaking tap i think it can get a lot more involved than people like to think it can yeah so sometimes it's easy but yeah sometimes you end up going down a bit of a rabbit hole with it and it turns into a bit of a nightmare i, I probably wouldn't take it on myself i personally wouldn't take it on myself as a um as a landlord i would, yeah. I would outsource it still okay well there you go from a horse mouth a, a plumber outsources his property management because it's the right way to go yeah. about it yeah, and, and even you know, um, it's probably the last thing you want to do also on a Saturday is go and exactly, yeah, do this right. You yeah. know, you want to enjoy it. And uh, how do you go about researching property? Are you so you said you want to sort of move into this buyer's agency space. So yeah. you you like doing it yourself, obviously. What what is it about the buying process that you most enjoy? Is it the is it the locating or is it the negotiating? Is it the uh, the structure and the process around getting a, a deal done? What well, what is it that really Press yeah, your buttons. Yeah, probably that side of it, just the yeah. structure and the process of sort of building out like what's going to be the sort of next best purchase and then mm. going down that road and researching the properties and finding the areas and things like that. The negotiating side of it, I, I don't mind doing, but it's probably not It's not the sort of um, main reason that I get into it. I don't get a buzz like some people do out of that type of thing. Yeah. I just feel like it's a, um, a necessity in the process and try and do a good job on that. And which, which areas do you like at the moment in terms of buying prospects in Australia? So I still like North Brisbane. I yeah. still think there's good opportunities up there. Just what do you classify as North Brisbane, like Deception Bay, Kippering, that sort of area? Yeah, or, th- yeah. that sort of area. Probably yeah. not too much further north than Deception Bay and especially mm. those coastal suburbs. I just like, I suppose, coming from Cronulla. And, and sometimes I just wonder whether the, the they have the same sort of lifestyle. Um, they no surfing Deception yeah, Bay Yeah, that's the, the difference. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, I just think there's good good infrastructure going in up there and, and still good lifestyle drivers. And you see, um, especially sort of Redcliffe and areas like that, there's mm. sort of coming head, ahead a little bit in terms of some trendy cafes going in there and some nice apartments being built and see some good opportunities there. So Have you spent so much time up there? You sort of jumped in the car and driven around and done all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I spent yeah. a fair bit of time up there. My partner's parents actually spend half a year in Noosa. They've oh, got okay. a nice property up there. So we... Um, we get up there a little bit and, and head sort of between Sunshine Coast and Brisbane. And mm. yeah, we spend sort of, we're up there sort of every couple of months driving around and, and more so since I've sort of started going down this buyer's agency path too, we've helped a couple of clients buy up that way. So okay. we'll be up there running around. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Nice one, awesome, Ben. Well, mate, thanks for coming in and uh, share, sharing your story. Uh, thanks for making the effort to come in today. As a, no worries. Thanks I guess for the book in the me. chat is still belting down rain out there. So uh, enjoy the drive home. It should yeah. be okay. At least everyone's off the road right now, but. There's probably flooding under the airport and all that sort of stuff. It's getting it's pretty crap through there. But, I'm uh, mostly nervous about the run back to the car, but that's all right. We'll see how we go. <laughs> You'll be right back up, mate. Thanks. I do appreciate you coming in and having a chat with us. And, um, uh, you know, uh, and, and tuning in, if I was tuning into this, I'd sort of this story of, you know, the, the mindset of buying a, a nice place to be your home uh, in your sort of mid-20s through to the evolution into a, a property investor, you know, uh, these things take time. You know, and, and as a property investor, you're always going to be evolving as your knowledge increases, uh, your financial capacity should be increasing. And 
you got to let the journey happen. Don't try and force a journey because uh, time can be a great educator. And uh, the longer you are in the market, the more experience you have, the better the property investor you're going to be. And I think Ben's story here is really reflective of that. So uh, take stock of that and um, enjoy enjoy the process. You know, you got to make the mistakes, um, but make sure you have more wins than mistakes and you should be doing the right in property. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Remember to check out smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. If you want to come on the podcast, it's pretty easy, isn't it, Ben? No worries. Yeah, Except for the good. maybe. The trip in, yeah, but, pick um, a sunny day. But pick a sunny day. Um, uh, we'd love to get you on. Just email the team editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. We'll sort it out. You can also connect in with us on uh, Facebook and all the other social stuff. Just search Smart Property HQ. You can send us a, um, a direct message on that as well. If you want to subscribe to uh, Smart Property Investment, if you're not ready to do so, see so the first to know what's going on in property and property investment. SmartPropertyInvestment.com.au forward slash subscribe. We'll be back again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.